I've been flying my drone now for quite a while and a lot of things have changed over the time that I have been uh, flying. But there's one rule that applies to everyone uh, and in all jurisdictions which has not changed and that is the VLOS rule, the visual line of sight rule. I believe that there's a problem with this rule and in this video I'm going to talk about what I think is the issue with the rule. So on the Transport Canada website, the rule is defined as visual line of sight or VLOS means unaided visual contact at all times with a remotely piloted aircraft that is sufficient to be able to maintain control of the aircraft, know its location, and be able to scan the airspace in which it is operating in order to perform the detect and avoid functions in respect of other aircraft or objects. So let's just begin with the reality that most pilots probably do not follow the VLOS rule, especially the requirement to have unaided visual contact at all times at all times with the remotely piloted aircraft. Because unless I'm missing something, this is not possible. How is it possible to have visual contact with the drone at all times? Especially given the fact that you have to look down at your tablet to get the specific telemetry of your drone. When you're looking at the tablet, you're not looking at the drone and are therefore, in my opinion, breaking the requirement to have visual contact at all times unless I'm missing something if you're looking down at your tablet you're not seeing your drone and therefore you're breaking that requirement that is very clearly articulated in the rule that you have to have visual contact with the drone at all time and by visual they mean with your eyes and you need to look down at the tablet you can't really fly the drone without looking down at the tablet because there's actually more information on the tablet than you get by simply looking at the drone with your eyes when it's in the sky. So that's one problem. Another problem with VLOS is that you're dealing with a very small drone. So let's take for example the Mini 2. A lot of people are now flying smaller drones and even the larger drones uh, are not that large especially drones that are made for consumers so we're talking about tiny drones which when you fly the drone you may be able to see it visually for quite a distance let's say for 200 300 400 500 if your eyes are really good you might even be able to see it for 600 feet but that's extreme uh, most people can't see it that far away. So while you are flying your drone and you're uh, looking at it with your eyes when you're taking off and it's in the sky, you're in compliance with VLOS. You can see it with your eyes. But let's say that you take a quick look at your tablet in order to properly compose a video shot or a photograph. And you're going to do this because these drones are made for taking video and photographs. Uh, most of us who fly drones, and um, I would say this is even true of people who fly uh, FPV drones, uh, first person view drones, they're there to make something with the drone, to take photographs, to take video. That's what the drone is made for. So you're looking at your tablet because you want to compose a shot and then you take um, the shot and look back at the sky and there's a good chance when you look back up uh, that you won't see your drone. You might not even have moved the drone, it might be in the same place, but given the fact that it's so small, you may not be able to uh, see it. It may be very difficult to locate the drone. This has happened to me many times. I'm not deliberately flying my drone beyond visual line of sight, 
But if I take my eye off the drone for a minute and look at the tablet, and then I try to relocate the drone, I can't see it. So would that be considered flying it beyond visual line of sight? Well, if I look at the actual rule, the VLOS rule says that a flyer needs to have unaided visual contact with the drone at all times. So I think by that standard, uh, I may be breaking uh, the law. So the bottom line for me is that VLOS, at least at the way it is uh, written now, is almost impossible to follow. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that in some circumstances, the requirement can be actually kind of dangerous, especially if you're dealing with a person who is new to uh, flying drones um, and that person loses sight of the drone and becomes overly anxious and flustered because uh, he can't visually see the drone. Being overly anxious because he's thinking I'm breaking the law now and uh, being afraid to get into trouble for breaking the law will make that person more likely to make a mistake that may actually be dangerous. And this brings me to my next point. What exactly is the point of having the VLOS rule be that strict? Does it actually enhance safety? So let me tell you a little uh, story, an anecdote. Um, a few years ago, I attended Profusion. Profusion is a show where vendors uh, show off their newest tech stuff. And at that time, I was relatively new to drone flying. And I went to Profusion specifically to check out some of DJI's newest drones. When I was there, I met a veteran uh, drone flyer whom I started a conversation with. And I mentioned how nervous I sometimes get when flying my drone. So he looked at me with a smile and he said, you know what, you got to learn to trust the technology. If you understand how everything works and you've dotted your I's and crossed your T's, you won't get into any, any issues. Most drone mistakes are not because of the tech, they're because of human error. So the reason I'm mentioning this anecdote is to highlight something that's often forgotten when it comes to drones. Flying safely isn't only about keeping your drone in line of sight. It's also knowing what to do if you've lost sight of your drone and understanding all the telemetry that's on the tablet when you are looking at the tablet. So if you understand the telemetry that's presented on the screen and you can use that telemetry in order to fly the drone, then you're going to be safe. The telemetry on the screen gives the pilot a lot more information than having the drone in visual line of sight. Even when the drone is not visible, the information on the screen gives a pilot a very good indication as to where the drone is located and how to bring it back home. So I know what people are going to say. The big question becomes, well, what if the app crashes and you don't have the drone's coordinates available? And to top it off, you can't see the drone. So once again, I would simply say that there's a need to trust the technology. The kind of drone that I'm talking about typically has a return to home button on the controller. Or if the drone loses connection to the controller, with GPS, it knows where to come back home to. It knows that it needs to come back home automatically. Now, before people get all upset at me because they think that I'm promoting unsafe flying, I want to say once again, I want to underline this, that I'm not doing anything of the sort. I am not in any way inherently against VLOS or advocating that people ignore the law and fly beyond visual line of sight. But what I am saying is that with the kind of technology that's built into drones, it is very difficult to fly VLOS and that in some instances, that limitation may actually lead to some issues which can potentially be dangerous. I'm also saying that 
given the sophistication of the technology, even when you lose sight of the drone, all is good as long as you understand the telemetry on your tablet and you are familiar enough with the drone to know how to bring it back home. Anyway, here are a couple of things that I would love to see in the VLOS requirement. So number one, instead of saying that the drone should always be in visual line of sight, instead the rule should be that there should be an attempt to always keep the drone in visual line of sight. I think that would be reasonable. A pilot should always attempt as best as he or she can to keep the drone in visual line of sight. Number two, I think that it's important to stress to pilots that the most important thing is to have a good understanding of the airspace that they're flying in. So for example, a pilot needs to make sure that they know of obstacles that may get in the way of safe flying, especially when losing VLOS. So it's very important to understand the airspace that you're in and to have a good sense of what's around you for at least uh, one or two kilometer diameter, I would say. That's very important. Know where you are. Number three, instead of a strict VLOS, it should be a strict LOS or line of sight rule. In other words, banning a pilot from flying a drone behind something where it might lose connection, especially if the pilot doesn't have a visual of the drone in the sky. So line of sight, I think, is very important, especially when the drone is not actually seen by the pilot. Number four, there should be a distance limit when flying a drone. I know this is controversial. The argument for VLOS is that the drone pilot has a visual of what is happening in the sky and react quickly. But you don't need to have visual line of sight of the drone in order to react quickly as long as the drone is not beyond a certain distance. As long as you know what's in the sky and you know that the drone is no further than let's say one kilometer away from you, you can react quickly because you can see a kilometer away from you. So you know what's what's happening uh, in the sky. And if you look at the telemetry on the tablet, you know exactly where your drone is and you can re respond and, and bring it back quickly or raise it or lower it as necessary if you see something happening in the sky. Number five, I think it's really important to emphasize to new drone pilots that they need to take it easy and not fly beyond their comfort level. Too many new pilots are overly eager and attempt to do things which they should only do uh, after some practice. In my opinion, not having a good sense of what your drone can and can't do is far more dangerous than losing sight of the drone when flying. Anyway, that's my take on VLOS. I'd love to know your thoughts, so leave your comments below and please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for information when I release new content. So take care for now, happy and safe flying, and I'll see you soon for another video. Bye-bye.